At last, the Sierra Cosworth is home. And well, it might very well be home, but it's far, far from finished. In truth, I've now got a pretty hard deadline. I've got to get this car finished in just a couple of months. You see, my son, who's currently doing his GCSEs, and he's got a prom to attend at the beginning of July. And well, he wants this to be his ride to the prom. He wants to arrive in 90 style and well, who'd blame him? So the clock is ticking. I've got two months to get this car finished. Sure, it's home and I'm really pleased it's home. It drove in here under its own power, but I've still got the entire interior to refit to this car and some electrical work to do. I'll share all of that in a moment. For now though, if you're new to this series, please go back and watch the previous videos on the restoration on my Sierra Cosworth. You can see me buy and collect the car. You can see the car being stripped down. You can see the major bodywork that we did to the car the rebuild of the YB engine, and you can see me starting this Sierra Cosworth for the first time. Right, when you've seen those, please come back to this and come on in, let me show you my Sierra Cosworth restoration. Now, before I jump into sharing the long list of jobs that still need to be done with this car, well, I thought I'd show you me collecting this car from RNS Motors, the first time my Sierra had been outside for nearly a year. The day has finally arrived. I'm in the truck heading to RNS Motors to collect my RS Cosworth, my Sierra Sapphire, which has been there for just under 12 months. Can't quite believe it. These things take so much longer than you plan. Uh, the car itself, well, it's been sat in their showroom for nearly a year and it's quite dusty. They haven't cleaned it. So the first job I need to do when I get back is give the car a decent clean and hoover out the inside because there's loads of ends and clippings of wires and electrical connections which I've asked them to leave in there because I'll clean that out and there's a bit of dust still from the body shop so get it home a decent clean get it in the garage and then start to work out where all the pieces of this big jigsaw puzzle go I can't wait as I say let's go get it Here we are then, arriving at RNS Motors. The car's still in the showroom, so I'll load it up, we'll get it home, and then we'll take a good look over the car, how it looks after a year being in there, and of course the time before at Tour Point MOT where the engine went in, and then we'll start to work out, well, where we start on this car.
Well, the Sierra's home and it drove out of RNS Motors under its own power. The first time it's done that in what? Nearly two years. I did stall it there once or twice, but it's difficult driving on an old big plastic drum. But anyway, I look forward to getting the Recaro seats back in this car. Sure, it needs a clean, but what's certainly starting to dawn on me now is the scale of the job ahead. Anyway, we'll take it one job at a time. As I say, we'll start with cleaning this car, we'll get it into the garage. I think the first job then is to test some of the electrics, make sure they're working, and then put that headlining in before we do anything else. I'm really excited to get this going. All clean then and back in the garage and ready for the work to start here in the interior. Remember, the clock is ticking. Now there are two jobs that I need to mention. The first is the rev counter and the temperature gauge still aren't working. And I don't mean right now, of course, they're missing at the moment. When I refit them, well, the rev counter doesn't rev and the temperature gauge isn't reading right now. Now between Alvin Power Motorsport and RNS Motors, they found a solution it requires a bit of work on the temperature gauge there under the bonnet and it requires a diode to be fitted between the engine and the rev counter so that that starts reading the right frequency. So it's going back for that, but they can fit both of those when the interior is back in. To be honest, the car actually needs to do a return visit to all of the professionals that have worked on the car. The car needs to go back to Torpoint MOT once the interior is back in for a quick nut and bolt check and of course to have an MOT. Then needs to go back to RNS Motors for that diode to be fitted. Then to Alvin Powell Motorsport because he wants to plug the car back in and do a quick retune of the engine once it's in the car and is driving. Uh, it then needs to go back to MK Body Shop to fit the side strips on the car to refit the skirts there and make sure the proper clips are holding them in place and just really to do some alignment and refit some of the things to the car now that the engine's back in. And it needs to go back to Paul Inch Engineering because he needs to skim the top of the rocker cover, revealing that nice aluminium finish. Of course, we've had that painted and needed to let the paint cure. So it needs to go back to all of them. But first, we need to do the interior. And that started with clearing this out and giving it a decent vacuum. And when long-term friend of the channel, Graham, was visiting, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to refit the headlining which I'd had retrimmed, the original material was peeling off, so it's had new material, a full retrim. But that was over a year ago. One thing's for certain though, well, my house will never feel the same because that headlining's been lent up against my fireplace for over a year. Right, here we go then. Let's get the interior cleared out.
I said this was a big jigsaw. Look at all the pieces. Fun and frustrating times ahead in, well, I suppose equal measures. Here are the parts required to secure the headlining, which is the next job. And well, here it goes. This really is a big moment. It's secured right now by a sticky pad that's above where the passenger seat goes and two plastic pin clips at the back. And now for the sunroof surround trim, which means the headlining should hold its own weight and allow us to fit everything around the edge. The headlining looks absolutely fantastic and well, already it's starting to feel like a proper car again with that in. And of course with the headlining in, well it meant that I could test the sunroof which is working absolutely fine. Yeah, really nice, a really big step forward. Uh, next, well, I don't know if I've told you this in previous videos, but we actually had a little fire here in the car. Here I'll show you. So my car has had a little fire about here. I assume when they were welding it here, well, it caught a little bit of the foam draft proofing installation, caught it here a little bit and it was, it was controlled. It was caught nice and early. There's no damage inside the door, but this loom has been, well, slightly fire damaged. If you can see there on camera, it's all a bit crispy. And uh, whilst the wires look intact, and actually I tested the rear lights here, I'll show you now. Whilst the hazard lights work, when using the indicators, I get some other bulbs illuminate with a dull glow. Brake lights work, as does one fog lamp, but I have no rear side lights, none at the moment anyway. This looks pretty untidy and well, yeah, it's the tape that's burnt. It's not actually the wires, but I think I should probably replace this bit of loom and this bit of speaker cable here that, uh, that's that been burnt too. So I've been out to the Dona Sierra that I keep out of the farm, that four by four estate, and I've cut this piece of loom out of that car. Nice long way forward there. So this one looks nice and intact and I'm hoping well, that Ford used the same loom on the estate as they did the Sapphire. Don't know, typical Ford look. I mean, that's all wrapped up there. That wasn't me, but it's got the plug on the end. It is for a an estate light, but looks the same as the one back there. So this should be able to go right back through, through this hole out and feed that one. And then the join we can do there in the boot. Of course, this would have to be the join up here. But first things first, need to make sure that it's the same number of cables. So I'll open this up a little bit, I think. Count the cables there, count the cables here, and assuming it is the same, well, I'll join them up. So, moment of truth, let's have a look. Got myself a knife here. So, in the one from the Sierra State, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 12, 13 cables, 13 cables in the donor loom. And we'll here, let's have a look. Take away a bit of this burnt bit, we don't need that anymore. 
Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Good stuff. So this should be a direct swap out. The colors are the same. They even look the same colors. Great. Okay. I think I'll chop this out down there. Start to join it up with the soldering iron. And then we'll drag this through the back, remove this one. And hopefully we will have sorted out this nasty damage. Let's get on with it. So I've installed the loom via the boot, just really laying it up against the original loom and taking the same path through to here. That's about the length of it. So I'm going to come back a bit to about here and I'm going to cut it. So here it goes. Well, there's no going back now. Right, let's take this old burnt one and put it out the way for a minute. Here's our new one. Here's our old loom. And this should be as simple as matching the colors. Let's hope it is. Of course, I've got the battery disconnected to, to do this. So let's get these wires exposed, get some decent connections going, get the soldering iron out. And well, see if we can get this all up and working. So here's my makeshift workbench, which I've taped one part of the loom to. I've separated all the wires out and well, it's time to get soldering. Here we go. This is me soldering. Can't call myself an expert at this, but well, it's connecting wires. She's got to match colors really. That's the connections in the front, all soldered and insulated. And then I wrapped the loom in some insulation tape just to keep it all together. Attention then turned to connecting the loom in the boot. Not too bad. And as a result of all of that, 26 solders in all, well, the full light test worked fine. That's brilliant. Look, I know that my soldering leaves much to be desired, but the important thing is that job is done. The connections, they're strong, they're well insulated and they're safe. And it means that I can move on to the more exciting part of the rebuild of this Sierra Cosworth, getting the bits in here that make it look more like a car. I can't wait. But there is a little bit more electrical testing for me to do today. And that's around the stereo. You see, my car didn't come with a stereo. There was a blank section and a trinket tray underneath. And there's been well, a point of much deliberation for me. What's the right stereo to go in a 1991 pre-facelift Sierra Sapphire Cosworth 4x4? So I wondered, is it this stereo here with uh, this graphic equaliser underneath? Or is it this one? I'm not sure it's these. I think these are possibly a little bit too old for the 91 car. So I wondered then if it was this one here, the 2007 stereo, that's 2007, the model number, not the year. Is this the correct stereo for the car? I actually fitted this one to the car to 
test it myself. And while I got no sound out of it, I think that an amplifier is needed. But actually, I'm not entirely sure that it was the 2007 stereo. These were certainly fitted to 1991 Fords. Lots of Fords had, had these. My Sierra XR 4x4 has this stereo, but I'm not sure that it went in the Sierra Cosworth. I think the right stereo is this one here, the 2008, the one with the pop-out buttons like this. I think this was the stereo that went in the Sierra Cosworth. And this has been kindly donated to the Sierra build by Graham. Thanks, Graham. So I think this is the one, but I don't think it will work without a graphic equalizer. So I hit eBay and for 48 pounds and nine pence delivered, well, I got this one, the graphic equalizer that sits underneath this stereo. I do know, of course, at the Sierra Cosworth, you could have optioned a CD player to go underneath it. But I bought one of these, no idea if either of these two things work. So I'll get the bottom of the dash put in today. I'll set these up and I'll see if they work. I'll see if we get sound out of, well, the speakers in this car, of which there aren't any fitted at the moment. So I need to do that too. And well, you can find out if these work in the next video. I'll feature this and I'll feature me continuing to rebuild this interior. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please do subscribe to follow this build and see me finally finish my Sierra Cosworth. If you've got some comments, leave them below in the comment section below. I love to read your thoughts and feedback on this build. Not too much hate about the soldering, please. And uh, don't forget to give this video a like. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next. Bye for now. Bye-bye.